In this video for Math 98, we'll cover problems from homework number 5, which covers section 13.1. The problems on this video are like problems 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, and 12 on the homework assignment. Let's look at a situation here. Let's suppose that a super ball bounces to two-thirds of its previous height with each successive bounce. So imagine maybe you're standing um, on a ladder and you drop a super ball and it continues to bounce and every time it bounces it's two-thirds of its previous heights. We're going to start by dropping the ball from a height of 108 inches. So the very first drop or first bounce is going to be from 108 inches and then the second bounce will be two-thirds of the previous height, so we might say that's 108 inches times 2 thirds. Okay, and you can calculate that if you want. 108 times 2 thirds would give you 72 inches. And then the next time, what we're going to do is we're going to get that 72 and we're going to multiply it by 2 thirds, and that bounce would be. 48 inches. Now, before we can write 48 inches down, I want you to think about this a little. That's really 108 times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. And that equals our 48 inches. And then the next bounce would be 48 inches times 2 thirds, which should give you 32 inches. Okay. And that's very nice. But 32 inches is also 108, my original one, times 1, 2 bounces, 3 bounces, right? So we have that situation there. And for my fifth bounce, it would be 32 times 2 thirds, okay? And 32 times 2 thirds is going to give you 21 and a third, okay? But I'm not too concerned, again, about that number. That's really 108 times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So you notice that with the second bounce, I multiplied by 2 thirds once. With the third bounce, I multiplied 108 times 2 thirds twice. With the fourth bounce, 108 times 2 thirds, so three, three times. Fifth bounce, 108 times 2 thirds, four times. So whatever the sixth would be, it would be 108 times 2 thirds, five times. And rather than writing 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds, I'm going to write it like that. Okay, and again, I can figure that out. That's to the fifth power there, make that a little clearer. Um, I can figure that out, but that's not so important to me right now. Let's take a look at a graph of this data. If I let the number of the bounce be the first one and the x-axis, okay, the horizontal axis. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this goes up quite a bit. It goes up from about 20 to about 108. So let's just count by 20s here. Let's say 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So the first bounce is about 108. The second bounce is going to be 72, which might be uh, somewhere about right there. Third bounce might be 48, which is maybe about right there. The fourth bounce ended up being 32, might be uh, maybe somewhere a little bit in there. The fifth bounce, 21, and a little bit more than the third. So you notice this graph does not look like a line doesn't really look like a parabola either. It has a different shape. I'm kind of drawing a little picture like that of the pattern of this graph. And if we wanted to describe the height of the nth bounce, what we would do is if y is equal to the height, then I notice this pattern in this table that when n is 2, this is 108 times 2 thirds to the first power when n is 3, this was 108 times 2 thirds to the second power. When n is 4, it's 108 times 2 thirds to the third power. When n is 5, 
it's 108 times 2 thirds to the fourth power. When n is 6, it's 108 times 2 thirds to the fifth power. And you notice the relationship between this n and this exponent is the only thing that's changing. And you could say that for the nth ball bounce, it's 108 times 2 thirds to the n minus 1. And you'll notice this is a new type of function, one that we really haven't seen before. Um, the variable here is in the exponent. And when that happens, this is an example of what we call an exponential function. Definition of an exponential function is as follows. An exponential function is written as f of x equals a times b to the x, where the coefficient a is a constant. The base, this is called the base, b is positive, but not equal to 1, and x is a real number. So in the case of our example, we had 108 equal to a, and the base, which we call b, is equal to 2 thirds, and my exponent right here is x. And you will notice in an exponential function, the exponent is a variable. So let's just practice identifying the coefficient, base, and exponent of each of these. So here, the coefficient is 4, and the base, b, is 3, and the exponent is x. Okay, right there is the exponent. Here, coefficient is a, it's 2,000. The base here, the base is written kind of in an odd way. This is not unusual. This is 1.0 point, 1 plus point 0 0.07. Or another way to write that, of course, is 1.07. But in any case, this is the base. And this here is the exponent. In this case, what are the constant, the coefficient, the base, and the exponent? Well, coefficient is 19,000. Base is 1 minus r. And exponent is t. Just in case the exponent, you always think, has to just be a single number, look at this example. Here, the coefficient is 7, the base is 0.85, and the exponent is 2t. So these are all examples of exponential functions. Now, one of the things that we've done with previous work is we've tried to find functions from data. You might recall for a linear function, here's an example of a linear function, that a function, a set of data or a sequence is linear if you're always adding the same things. In this case, 2 plus 5 is 3, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, 14 plus 3 is 13, and this d was called a common difference. Okay, now we could use our table from before. To get this, we could say, well, my first item is 2, my second item is 5, my third item is 8, my fourth item is 11, my fifth item is 14, and my sixth item is 17. And we found out that that first difference was 3. And if you remember from Math 93 or 94, this first difference was equal to the slope. And so in this case, my slope is 3. So I could use for a linear function as y equals mx plus b. And my slope is going to be the same as that first difference. It's going to be that 3. Now, what about this y-intercept? Well, one thing you could do is you could go back 3. Since this was 1, the previous one is 0. And so I would go, since we change between these output variables by 3 each time. I could go back 3 and get negative 1. Or, if I choose, I could put in values here for x and y, and I can um, work on that that way. So that's another way that you could kind of do this. So that is an example for a linear function. For a quadratic function, okay, it's very similar. But you might remember for a quadratic function, how do you tell if data is a quadratic function? If I'm looking at my input and my output, I'm going to put them here, 1, 3, 2, 12, 
three twenty seven four forty eight five seventy five the first difference here you'll notice is nine and then twelve to twenty seven you say huh what's the difference there well that's gonna be what fifteen right no oh, the first differences aren't the same and then forty eight to twenty seven that difference is going to be 21 and then 75 minus 48 that difference is 27 but you notice the second difference is the same and this right here is the same and that tells you that this is quadratic so you might remember that the second difference being constant tells you that this is quadratic now there was a method we did in math 94 to do this you set this equal to 2a you found the constant, you found b by plugging in a point. But I think it's just as easy, and you certainly could have done this with the linear function too, to use our calculator. So where we're going to do this is we're going to, let me move this up a little, hit the stat button, and then go to edit, and clear out whatever you have in L1 and L2. That means using your arrow keys to go up to L1 or L2, hitting clear and enter. I'm going to put my items for x in L1 and my items for y in L2, hitting enter after I enter each item. Then I'm going to hit stat, calc, and go to quadratic regression. Whoops, excuse me, let's try it again. Stat, calc, going to quadratic regression, number five. And if you have your data in L1 and L2, there's no need to uh, type anything in. But here I get my equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is 3, b is 0, and c is 0. So that tells me that y equals 3x squared is my quadratic equation. So you can tell if a linear function data is linear if the first difference is constant. You can tell if data is quadratic if the second difference is constant. You can use a table or your calculator to determine by using regression to determine if this is what you want. But now let's talk about an exponential function. So this was the data we had before. What tells you if something is an exponential function? Well, if you have your data here, the easiest way to tell if something is an exponential function is to determine if the ratio between successive items is constant. What that means is I'm going to take the second item divided by the first. Okay, 72 divided by 108 is, guess what? That's 2 thirds. And 48 divided by 72, that's 2 thirds. And 32 divided by 48 that's two-thirds. And 21 and a third divided by 32, 21 and a third divided by 32, that's two-thirds. If this ratio between successive terms is constant, then the function is exponential. Again, you can write this exponential function a few ways. One way is to try to use a table like we have here we could write down y equals a times b to the x, and this value right here is b. Okay, so that's b. And then to determine a, we could just plug in values. For example, I'll just use the first value, 108 equals a times 2 thirds to the first. That tells you that 108 times 3 halves equals a. So if we take 108 times 3 halves, we get 162. So my equation for this would be A, which is 162. So I'll make sure I write that down. A is 162 times 2 thirds to the X. That is one way to write down this equation. So this is what we have for an exponential function um, to give us this value that we have been working with here. Now, so to summarize, linear, the first difference is the same. Quadratic, the second difference is the same. And exponential, the common ratio is the same. 
So let's practice a little. Consider this sequence. Is this linear, quadratic, or exponential? So I'm just going to write this out in a table. So let's check the first differences. This is 8 minus 2 or 6. 18 minus 8 or 10. 32 minus 18, which is 14. So you'll notice the first differences are not the same, so it's not linear. Is it quadratic? Well, if we do the second differences, 10 minus 6 is 4. 14 minus 10 is 4. So this is quadratic. Now I can use my calculator again. So I'll hit stat, edit. I'll clear this out. Go over here and clear this out. Put in 1, 2, 3, 4. Then put in my data, which is 2, 8, 18, and 32. Stat, calc, quadratic regression. There I go. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a is 2, b is 0, c is 0. So y equals a, which was 2x squared plus 0x plus c. That is my quadratic situation. Let's take a look at this one, see if we can find this. So again, I'll put out these four data points. 0 0.4, 1.6, 6.4, 25.6. What I might do is just check the first difference here. The first difference, 1.6 minus 0.4 is 1.2. Well, certainly the difference from here to here is more than 1.2, so it's not linear. What about quadratic? Well, this was 1.2. This one, 6.4 minus 1.6 is 4.8. And this one, 25.6 minus 6.4 is 19.2. It's pretty clear to see here that if you try the second differences, this is 3.6. And certainly 19.2 minus 4.8 is 14.4. That's much more than um, 3.6. So the second differences are not the same. It's not quadratic. So let's check that this is truly exponential. I'm going to take the two values, the second value divided by the first. 1.6 divided by 0.4 gives me 4. And my next value, 6.4 divided by 1.6 also gives me 4. And 25.6 divided by 6.4 gives me 4. So this 25 divided by 0.6 divided by 6.4 is 4. So this is truly an exponential sequence. Okay. To find the equation, I might choose to write y equals a times b to the x and do it this way. That would be y equals a times 4 to the x. And again, let's plug in my first point, which is 0.4 equals a times 4 to the first. So a equals 0.4 divided by 4. If you take 0.4 and divide it by 4, you will get 0.1. So a is 0.1. What that means is that our final equation is y equals 0.1 times 4 to the x. Now I'd like you to take a minute and see if you can tell whether this one is linear, quadratic, or exponential. Okay, so let's take a look at this. You'll notice that this one is exponential because 3 divided by 1 is 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3, 27 divided by 3 is 3, and 81 divided by 27 is also 3. So it's exponential. My b is 3. But this time, I'm going to use my calculator just to show you that you can. Hit stat, edit. I'm going to just clear out L2 because I want L1 to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to put in my data points here. 1, 3, 9, 27. Oh, no, I need one more. So I'm going to go over to L1, enter 5, and go over to L2 and enter 81. Now, if you hit stat calc, 
and you go down beyond number 7 here, so you notice you'll eventually find this, EXP regression. That's exponential regression. Hit enter, hit enter again, and here it gives you that A is 0.3 repeated, B is 3, and that the equation should be y equals a times b to the x. So y equals 3 times, well, 3 is b. What's a? 0.3 repeated is 1 third. So y equals 1 third times 3 to the x. That's one way to write this equation. So that's how you can use your calculator and the table to find these exponential equations. Now. Let's look at another way to look at these. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little here. Another way to look at an exponential equation. We have that y equals a times b to the x. We can also write that as y equals a times 1 plus r to the x, where r is called a growth factor if this function is increasing, and r is called a decay factor if this is decreasing. Let's take a look at this function. Here, we have an exponential function, h equals 32 times 1.25 to the x. So a, the coefficient, is 32, b is 1.25. However, you notice 1.25 can be written as 1 plus 0.25 to the x. So r here, because this is 1 plus r, r here is 0.25. What this means is that this exponential function is growing by 25% each time. Let's look at an example. h equals 1. h, if x equals 1, we have this. 32 times 1.25. So what is 32 times 1.25? That's 40. And you'll notice the difference between 40 and 32, the previous example, 40 and 32, the difference is 8. Okay? Now, if I look at the second one, this where x is 2, 32 times 1.25 squared is 50. Okay? So, how much did you go up by? You went up by 10, right? And you started at 40. And you'll notice that that is an increase. That right there is the decimal 0.25. That is my growth factor. So this is growing by 25%. Here's another example. k equals 5 times 1.025 to the t. a here is 5. b is 1.025. And r, then, is what? Well, remember, this is equal to 1 plus r, so r equals 0 0.025, or growth by 2.5%. Now, be careful. These numbers can be a little unusual, like in this example. n equals 7 times 2.5 to the t. a is 7, and b is 2.5. But 2.5 is 1 plus r, so r equals 1.5, which means an increase of 150%. So each of these examples, this was growing. Let's look at one where it doesn't grow, okay? Like this one. Here, the base is 0.65. But 0.65 equals 1 plus r, then r equals 0.65 what? Minus 1. And if you say 0.65 minus 1, you'll notice that's minus 0.35 or minus 35%. So this is what we call an, a decay equation. And this is the decay factor is minus 35%. Okay? Here, the base is 0.125. And again, I'm looking for the growth or decay factor, I'm going to take that base, make it equal to 1 point plus r. So 0.125 minus 1 will give me r, which is minus 0.875 or minus 87.5%. Be careful when you look in WebAssign which form they want the answer. Let's take a quick look at some graphs, and then we'll be done with this section. So I'm going to go over to my calculator. 
And I'm going to attempt to graph these two. So I'm going to put in 10 times 1.25 to the x. This one, I'm going to put in 12 times 2.5 to the x. Okay. And uh, let's make my window just a little bigger on my y. I'll maybe do from minus 5 to about 20. Okay. Let's count by twos. So here is 10 times 1.25 to the x. And here is 12 times 2.5 to the x. Notice in both these cases that the base is bigger than 1 and the growth factor, r, is larger, is positive. So in both of these cases, we would say these functions are increasing, are going up as you go from left to right. Now let's take a look at some other examples here. So I'm going to take a look at this one. I'm going to clear this out. 8, parentheses, 0 0.75 raised to the x. And this one, 10, parentheses, 0 0.25 raised to the x. And again, let me just check my window. I like my x-axis. My y, this might be a little bit too, um, well, let's just leave it as is and see what happens when I hit a graph. So here's the first one. And here's the next one. You notice that both of these don't increase but decrease. And notice that the base here is less than 1 and that the growth factor, r, won't be positive but negative. So to summarize this, we can say that the graph of y equals a times b to the x, if b is greater than 1, increases as we go from left to right. All right, so we would do something along the lines of this. Now, you might notice that this point here is also 0a. If I plug in x equals 0, I get a is my output. So here I'm assuming a is positive. And again, if a is positive, and I look at a number between 0 and 1, it's going to go through 0a again. And this time, it's going to decrease and look like this. And this is the general form of my exponential equation. I hope you have found this video useful.